Hi, my name is Brianna Johnson, and this is Fleeting, a podcast about entering the uncomfortable world of love and sex. Today, my guest is a very good friend of mine, Mary Rose Clark, who I met in our junior year of college. We were both communications majors, and we both did CSP, the Comprehensive Studies Program. So I think through our similarities and our, honestly, our outlooks at life, um, we naturally became really close friends. So the first half of the podcast sort of discusses what it's like to be a religious individual that has sex and can be in a loving relationship, but sort of has the social stigmas that can be connected to those things within the relationship itself. So just to start off, tell me a little bit about who you were in high school and how that kind of changed when you got to college. Yeah. Well, so who I was in high school kind of segregated into two different people. Mm -hmm. So it was like first relationship and then second relationship is really how I see myself. Uh Because I was very different in both of those roles. But I think that kind of carried into college as like I was still a person of faith and I was still a person that was in a relationship. So it was hard to kind of connect the two of like my high school self and my college self because Mm -hmm. my boyfriend what was mary rose one like so we started dating in eighth grade it's like the end of eighth grade so Mm -hmm. i was 14 um and then that kind of led into sophomore year of high school okay so 10th grade i was like 15 16 ish um so probably between like the edge of like end of being 13 beginning of being 16 it was like this whole relationship Uh uh-huh and it was just to most people i was like that very uptight outgoing but like super christian type of person yeah and then the second part of high school was i was not that at all and i felt like more myself like that was when i was like cussing and people knew that i had sex (laughs) like like, all this other stuff that i just felt more free and not so chained down do you think that relationship added the first relationship I should I should clarify mm-hmm. sort of added to why you were the way you were or do you think it was just sort of like you were brought up a certain way and it just was fabricated into your relationship it was definitely my relationship yeah so because I wasn't even Christian before I had met him and it was really mm-hmm. through him that I found like the church again because I was raised up Catholic it's like with mm-hmm. the catechism and all that but I never really got into it until I met him yeah and then I kind of got more into it so it was really because of that relationship and because of him that we were like vibing off of each other uh-huh. and I was like hey maybe this is a part of me that I could see growing and like that's how I developed myself was through him mm-hmm. and I think that's part of the reason why I am who I am now mm-hmm. is because I saw that relationship and I was like I did not like who I was then mm-hmm. and I realized toward the end of it that that was completely toxic completely mm-hmm. negative for who I am and who I need to be and then that was why the second part of me happened where I had like, yeah. this breakthrough and I was like fuck that <laughs> <laughs> I am this new person I am who I feel like I should be mm-hmm. not who I need to be what were the mental conversations you were having with yourself towards the end of that first relationship with that guy was it more so questioning who he was too or was it just sort of like you were really reflecting on yourself both we didn't end it his parents broke us up not because we broke up but then it was a hard it was like the few months after that that I realized his reaction to that and like his reaction to his parents getting into our relationship I was Mm -hmm. like you are not who I thought you were and then I was not only questioning myself and who I was Mm because I was so developed in him that I was like, who are you? And then I was like, who am I? Mm -hmm. (laughs) If we're not together, then how do I know who I am? Because like eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade is like when you really develop who you are with your friends, especially. Yeah. And in that relationship, I lost my friends. I lost my boyfriend. I was like, I'm alone. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. know who I am. Shit. No, that's like, no, but like, (laughs) no, yeah, (laughs) I've seen some shit. No, but like, like, and it's all, it's so crazy to go through that at such a young age right? because it really does solidify like what your beliefs are on like being in a relationship yeah especially in high school at least like in a small high school when something does happen it's like a a huge catastrophe you're Mm -hmm. like oh so and so broke up and or oh so and so said that they don't like so and so and you're Mm -hmm. like damn my life's over like this is the four years and you're like this is a stigma that i have for the next three years of it exactly so i graduated with 38 kids because my high school was seventh through 12th grade Mm -hmm. and there are 300 kids total so Yeah, so just to backtrack a little bit, just to Mm -hmm. go on with whatever the hell I wrote in my questions, to make that transparent to the audience, too. (laughs) Um, Just completely, yeah, just completely deconstruct the podcast. What was your opinion Mm -hmm. on love in high school? What do you think it was, if you could, like, reconstruct it now? Hmm. I think that I still always had this mentality of, like, you're dating to marry. Mm -hmm. And that was what I kind of based my whole foundation on for relationships. And that's what I still do. And, like, that's what happened when I I was, like, a freshman. And I was, like, I'm dating this guy 
to marry this guy. And that's why I think it was so toxic because I was 14 being like, I want to finish the rest of my life with this person. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to talk about that because I feel like (laughs) we come from small towns where that is the mentality. That is is like, if you are not going to college and you're not going into trade school, you need to find a husband and you need to have kids and get married. Yep. Well, because I saw my parents, my parents were high school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. My brother was dating a girl who he ended up marrying and were high school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with all older siblings and I was the youngest. So I saw them in relationships and I was like, I want to feel that too mm-hmm. and I grew up more like as mature as them being mm-hmm. younger and watching more explicit material and I was like I want a relationship and I want love and like I want all this other stuff okay like going on to the marriage thing yeah. though I don't want to get into like politics here. Mm-hmm. but did you would you say you grew up in a conservative high school Very. isn't it so crazy like the things you believed in high school like about like gender and like sexuality that just like change completely when you mm-hmm. get to college and like oh yeah how your hometown could be such a bubble yeah especially you know? coming to a liberal college like ann arbor mm-hmm. and like university of michigan mm-hmm. where you come here and you're like transgender bisexual like mm-hmm. all these different sexualities and sexual orientations and you're like i never had any experience with that mm-hmm. and then you like question your own and you're like are you questioning like, other people's around you and you're like this mm-hmm. is more accepting now and so it's weird to like migrate from one to the other yeah and i i mean like i remember like during or CSP orientation mm-hmm. and some girl was like I I don't even know what transgender means right and and you know like after a while of like talking to her I found out she she gra- she graduated from high school of 12 kids mm-hmm. yeah, not 12 kids but like her graduating class was right. 12, was 12. Qu- 12 yeah. was 12 kids and I was just like wow like and I'm not saying that like you're dumb or naive or any of that stuff yeah. it's you're just, just ignorant that, you yeah. Don't know. yeah and these these <laughs> You know, like I didn't take sex ed in high school Mm -hmm. because (laughs) my sex ed was taught by a pastor. And I was like, I already know what. And I mean, like I came from a very open family, not open, open. But Mm -hmm. like my mom was like, we're going to talk about sex if you want to talk about sex. Obviously, I was an awkward high schooler and didn't want to talk about sex Mm -hmm. with my mom. And now, well, I mean, like and you get older (laughs) and then you're like, "Uh, mom, I have this question about like why my vagina looks like this, you know. And like in high school, you'll be like, I'm just going to keep it to myself. And hopefully it doesn't, you know, like hopefully I don't like have chlamydia you know but you know and then and then these schools either don't have sex ed which I mean like I I guess like you don't necessarily have to talk about being trans and sex ed because that's a whole like gender thing and sometimes that doesn't come into play in those conversations even Mm -hmm. though it should but not to get into like a a comrade yeah especially not like 10 years ago though Mm -hmm. like society's also changed a lot lot. and also so rapidly that like i I understand why some schools just like don't know where to insert that conversation Mm -hmm. i get it um but going back to the sex thing but it's it's so scary Mm -hmm. to think that that kids are getting either information from the internet or from like their friends right or adults that don't want to talk to them about sex yeah well like that's how i learned about sex Mm -hmm. was like from friends of friends or like my immediate friends or porn i remember in high school someone asking like oh do you guys masturbate to like a group of girls and there were like guys standing around us and all of us just like stiffened up and we're like what is that (laughs) i don't what's a clitoris (laughs) no god it's it especially in high school if someone knows that you know what that is Mm -hmm. you get the wrong attention yeah oh for sure at least in my high school that's what it was it it was this real it wasn't even like the wrong attention it was weird vibes Mm -hmm. people like trying to ask you Mm -hmm. if you want to fuck that was like the big question of relationships or Mm -hmm. people just like that were talking in general was like oh did you guys have sex like that, like, like, that was like after I broke up with my first boyfriend, mm-hmm. it was like, oh, did you guys have sex? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, I don't know, like trying to tiptoe around the subject. Mm-hmm. And then he blatantly came out one time and said it, like got through the grapevine. Mm-hmm. So then after that, I was like, fuck, like I'm going to take my own agency. And I was like, yeah, we fucked. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like all right. Also, it was just, Dude. oh my God. And then, but then after that, it was like all these, this male attention that was so yeah. negative and unwanted. And they were like talking to me and I was like, okay, maybe you're being genuine. And they're like, hey, want to send me nudes? I was like, no. <laughs> also i don't want to <laughs> do you feel like nudes took off when we got into high school yeah. i feel like it did because because yeah. snapchat yeah yeah because okay snapchat why. came out when we were in seventh grade yeah. eighth grade yeah so we were in middle school everyone kind of had phones at that point yeah i in high school i was so scared of someone asking me that question 
because again you don't know how to tell somebody no Mm -hmm. i know that you have like all of these adults being like just tell them no but it's like there's this weird again like the social stigma of like if you say no then he's gonna tell all his friends and like this is not every boy this is not every no no exactly but this is like the people i've interacted with or heard talking about these things and it just it just like it's so scary for young girls Mm -hmm. and like probably and additionally for like non-binary kids and and some guys too yeah. you know this is this is true of shitty people are shitty people yep. you know and if someone asks you for nudes and you tell them no and then they go off and do something rude and assholey mm-hmm. like that's that's the person but you mm-hmm. know like it is very common for these guys to be like send nudes and you're like no right I'm, and also like then the whole convert i think my my other thing was like what if someone puts these on the internet right because that was big when we were in high school too mm-hmm. like all those revenge porn yeah. yeah yeah so people putting putting their exes nudes online yeah. that is so scary and i think it's still a fear of mine and in, in college as someone in a, in a relationship i always think about the past nudes i have yeah, sent yep. and being like that well, person could just pull that out of their like cloud and be I like use my ex-boyfriend's dick pic to send to his current girlfriend at the time to yes. be like, yo, he just sent me a dick pic. Well, so it was probably like a few months after we broke up or like a year mm-hmm. after we broke up. And we like that whole summer after we like kind of fuck buddies. Like we didn't really fuck again, but like we were just like kind of so talking because mm-hmm. it was a whole like, oh, you're my first love. So I still feel those feelings for you. But at the same time, like you're an asshole. Mm-hmm. But then he got into another relationship and then like two months into the relationship, he was like sending me nudes, like trying to dirty talk with me. And I was like, no you have a girlfriend i will tell her and so then i was like okay well if you don't break up with her mm-hmm. by the this homecoming dance or snow coming dance whatever then i'm gonna send it and then he never did so i sent it to her and i was like this is his dick <laughs> <laughs> he just sent this to me <laughs> literally and then they broke up so that's what happens when you fool around yes you said something in that that i also want to talk about no it was like the feelings you have for somebody yeah. that is your first love and that's how i felt about that dude that i was fooling around with the summer before college yeah like because even though they wronged you in some kind of way and it really hurt you fully yeah yeah. but this whole concept of love can be like so powerful sometimes Mm -hmm. that it's like oh no he's not that person anymore he's that person that you thought he was seven years ago like no exactly (laughs) and every time like i see that dude Mm -hmm. or like think of that dude i still get that feeling of like I don't know. It's like at the at, in the pit of my chest. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, why do I still right. like you? Because right. like you were, and I'm not saying everyone's first relationship is gonna be awful and everyone's right. first relationship is gonna be toxic, mm-hmm. because you know, I I think in some ways every first relationship is gonna be extremely messy because mm-hmm. no one ever goes about it in the quote unquote right way. Right. I and I don't know if it's just because. If it's tied, if it's tied to your self-worth or if it's tied to your own personal ideas of love, when you break up with that person, it's like, do I know what I'm doing? Yeah. Is the next one just going to be the same thing? Mm-hmm. Like, that was my biggest fear, especially when I first got into college. So I got out of a relationship with a dude that, like, just the end of it was awful, horrible. I got to college and I went buck wild, for <laughs> lack of a better word. But I was like, any dude who would approach me, I'd be like, hell yeah, dude. Because, like, I just didn't you know. Didn't know. Yeah. That's from me. I I overthink stuff all mm-hmm. the time. It's like this happens. I'm like, oh, we're gonna. I can see that in like 50 years from now. Like I can see us doing that. Like mm-hmm. in 20 years from now, and you envision like the long term. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, you're like, oh, all these cute little dates, yeah. and they're like, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, like you're planning. You start making things. plans, right? Yeah. And like Pinterest just <laughs> wedding dress ideas, house ideas. My whole life is just planned. And then you break up with somebody, and you're like, the Pinterest board has to be deleted <laughs> now. Like, I hope the next person likes to. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, this. This granite countertop, so they better be into it. (laughs) 